Welcome to Sew and Tell, where sewists from fashion, theater, and indie sewing bring their different perspectives to the hottest trends in the sewing community. I'm Meg Healy. I'm Kate Zeinard. And I'm Amanda Carestio. Today on the podcast, we're talking fall trends for 2019. We're also talking about our favorite fall patterns and fabrics that we're looking forward to sewing this season. Before we get started, let's check in. I wanted to say there are two really exciting things happening this month in September. First, it's National Sewing Month. Woo! Yes! And um, I put together a little blog with ideas about how to celebrate the month, and I'll link to that in the show notes page, because um, it's, it's kind of exciting for us to all get out there and show everybody our love for sewing and share our enthusiasm. Um, so I will, I'll link over to that. Happy National Sewing Month. Mm-hmm. Um, more importantly, though, Meg is getting married. <gasps> yes. I know it's coming up so quick. I can't believe, you know, I just remember this time last year when we set the date. It was like, oh, it's a year away. And now it's like a couple weeks away. And it's and crazy. Y- but And by the yeah. time this comes out, it will be a couple days away. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I can't imagine. I know. <laughs> but how, yeah. how are you feeling? Are you feeling totally overwhelmed um not as much as yeah I think I think when it comes down to the days leading up I'm just every night I go to sleep and I tell Julian I'm like just logistics right because yeah. if, if I'm sewing something too when I go to sleep I'm so I I think of like ways to like sew a certain seam so I just like go through logistics in my mind as I'm just like the schedule and like everything and it's just like it's, you know what can you you can only think so much and plan so much but yeah at <laughs> least all my so. yeah at least most of my sewing done my this weekend um it was my goal to just finish up absolutely everything in like my my main wedding look so I finished everything it was a full day basically of hand sewing oh, <laughs> oh my gosh, gosh. because we it's just all those that. like little little tacks like snaps and um, hems and stuff like that. So got that all done. And I wore uh, like medical, like those blue medical gloves because I just didn't want to get um, anything on on the dress. That's, and I heard that that really helps. Because yeah. my hands, is that is that just me? Or do your hands get really sweaty when you're hand sewing for a oh, long period definitely, of time? Definitely, definitely yeah, hand that, sewing. Yeah. Really? It yeah. Kind of, for me, it kind of depends on the temperature of the room. I mean, if no, the room's if, if not really hot. Cold, yeah, it's like I can't even it's it's like so slippery in my hand. And so I think it was even last year I was hand sewing and I put it on my Instagram. I was like, does anyone have any tips for sweaty hands while hand sewing? And actually, my uh, cousin who lives in Norway, she's a dentist and she reached out because, you know, they have to do, you know, stitching and stuff. And she goes, wear medical gloves that and that is a great, That's a tip, great tip for sweaty hands while hands on my hands did not get sweaty and my fabric was left and un, like so smudgy weird because let me tell you when I put my hands into medical gloves they get sweaty in a half a second oh really yeah because oh. they're not breathing at all uh, yeah no I guess it's just kind of when the, the sweat gets on the, the fabric oh yes I guess. the sweat wouldn't get on anything yeah, just on me. I know. <laughs> ah, just like dropped inside. Yeah, yes. anyways. But yeah, you know, another feeling... reason I will never sew something that's white. <laughs> never, ever. It's just yeah, not worth yeah. it. <laughs> I know. Oh, yeah. I had like a, oh, like a spot uh, treatment remover, like right, you know, Ready by my side mm-hmm. because yeah. you just yeah. never, never know. Yeah. It just, yeah. Did you and bleed on it? Tr- I did a couple times, but you know my trick. <laughs> what is it? Wait, own, remind me. Your your own spit gets yeah. out your um, own blood. Yeah. Yeah. If you if you bleed on something yeah. as fast as you can, spit on it yeah. because your Just, spit will break break down your own blood. Yeah. Good to know. It's, yeah. yeah. It's. I mean, it's gross, you know. but I mean, I've I've sewn enough white things to, <laughs> that you know it's like ah oh no oh no okay. And then you get ready to go. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's yeah. I know. I love that trick. It's so so much it's, fun. It's, it's gross, but it's very very useful. And uh, yeah, I mean, if if you need it, it's it's there, and it's an immediate fix, and it works better than pretty much anything else. Oh yeah, yeah for sure. And you guys had some busy weekends, didn't you? Yes, we did. Yes, we did. I was over <laughs> uh, in St. Louis at Baby Lock Tech. Um, Ooh, and that was really fun. 
Was it? Good. It was, yeah. Um, I was volunteering at the local anime convention uh, this weekend. So I um, I spent the whole weekend talking. I don't think I sound particularly hoarse, which was, I think, no, a miracle. No, sound- yeah. <laughs> I sound normal? Okay, good. Um, but yeah, I, I, I saw a lot of cosplay and I talked to a lot of people and uh, had a really good time. I'm very tired now, though, so I'm going to try to keep my energy up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, what might pep you up is talking about fall. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know fall. how much I love trends. Yeah. Let's, let's jump in, you guys. Yeah, let's jump in. So I know it feels like we just got out our tank tops and shorts, but soon fall will arrive, and with that, fall sewing. Now, not the most popular, but perhaps um, the must-know fall trends from New York, Milan, Paris, and London will get you more excited about starting that first fall pattern. So I did, um, I kind of strayed from my usual Vogue roundups and I found um, one on who, what, where that I really liked. And I thought it was like a really nice, concise list of trends that I really gravitated to. And I Mm -hmm. was seeing during, uh, during the season. So I'll just kind of run through them and then we'll talk about them. So first up is head to toe pistachio, which Obviously, I love because it's a shade of green (laughs) and it's basically kind of in that trend of, you know, the all dressing in one color. So I just I love that. I love that color so much. It's it's just like a pretty, pretty green. And then next we have. And if you want to see the details of that, just FYI, we will put the link in the show notes so you can look at the uh, at the slideshow that makes talking her way through. Sorry, I just broke in to say that. Oh, yeah. No, no. Yes. Thanks. Thanks for the reminder. And I also will link to in the show notes. I did a post. Um, I was remembering about uh, five months ago when these shows were going on a uh, post about fall 2019 ready to wear. So my favorite look. So I give pattern suggestions and I actually picked out two pistachio head to toe looks. So nice. <laughs> we'll link I to that post, those. too. Yeah, super, super cute. Like pistachio leather. Oh, like oh, I, yeah. I need some right now. <laughs> That does sound pretty. Okay. Yeah. And so next we have Romance Gone Grunge. So this is kind of the mix of like a punk rock princess sort of theme coming back into play. And then next we have Nothing But Knit. So this is like full on knit dresses, maybe knit leggings with a long knit cardi, just like lots of knits, which is kind of cozy and fun. Mm -hmm. And then we have crayon legs up next, which is basically just like lots of bright tights. So and, uh, I love that I love so this much. One, so, yeah. yeah. And that's probably one that you can just, you don't have to sew. You just. Yeah. It's not really very get a nice sewable it's not, trend. No, no. Just get a pair of, you know, crazy bright tights and you'll you'll be good to go. <laughs> and then next we have period pieces. So kind of corseting coming back into play. I know um, in my blog post I did uh, Versace did a lot of corsets like over more bulky um, things underneath, like just a baggy T-shirt and then a corset. And I thought that was kind of that was kind of cool. So just kind of corsets coming back. And then number six, which it's also very cool. It's basically bedding. So lots of pu- like these puffer jackets, which are so high fashion now, which is great because I have a lime green puffer jacket that I haven't worn in like six years because I just saved it for the ski slope. So <laughs> excited, excited to bring that back. Yeah, lots, lots of uh, quilted, quilted overwear on that one. Uh huh. Uh huh. Totally. And the next is classics with a twist. So this is like, think just like a classic trench, but maybe the lining all inside is like a crazy plaid or something or that has piping details. So it's like those classic pieces with just little pops of a twist or something like that. So that's kind of fun, too, if you know so you don't want to go mm-hmm. crazy, crazy out there. I think that one's really cool, too. And then we have a night at the museum, which is, you know, bringing in kind of prints and graphics with, um, you know, um, what do I think? Museum like stuff. Yeah, it's it's Jeez. like it's like, like large. Yeah, 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 it's, it's like art, large yes, art pieces. Was, yeah. Oh my gosh, the... I was thinking, what's in museums? <laughs> like, oh, art. <laughs> <laughs> Museum stuff, guys. Oh, all right. 
Monday, let's let's go. <laughs> we got this. And then, and then, last but not least, we have High Shine, which I feel like this tr- this trend should should be kind of on its way out because it has been so prevalent in the past years. It's kind of, but I still do love it. I love a High Shine moment. So again, lots of metallics, and mm-hmm. you know that's mm-hmm. usually good for holiday season. Um, so that's kind of the the top nine trends that um, they reported on that I really resonated with and and loved. So let's let's start off with like what of these trends is your favorite that you don't have to wear or so you just you just love. Well, putting aside the uh, crayon likes, which I just generally love, <laughs> um, I actually really like the high shine one. I'm just I don't know. Oh, I'm attracted to shiny things. Love that. Um, I. I got to be honest with you, I probably would never sew any of it because I've spent too much of my life in the theater sewing on lame and other metallic fabrics, and I don't want to anymore. I really, really don't want to anymore. <laughs> so, but you know, there's all kinds of like metallic linens out there and metallic mm-hmm. knits yeah, that are pretty easy have, to sew. Like a, it doesn't have a to be fleck of, right, yeah. right. I know Robert Kaufman has those those beautiful yarn dyed um, with metallics yes, in them, like beautiful. we had on the cover of mm-hmm. the spring summer issue of Creative Machine Embroidery, and that's the kind of way I would bring in that yeah, trend. A little but bit like, more subtle, right? But like mm-hmm. a full on like lame sort of thing. I'm sorry, I. I'm hoping to live the rest of my life without Never ever sew sewing lame sewing. again. Ah. Um, so yeah. <laughs> How about you, Amanda? Um, I really love the crayon legs. Um, yeah. I was trying to think of if that could work for leggings instead of tights, or does it oh, does it need definitely. to be? Yeah, because I definitely need to sew some leggings this fall. Yeah, so I maybe think it I'll... depends on on. What kind of shoes you wear? How important it yeah, is if they have footies exactly. on. Exactly. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, definitely depends on the shoe. Cool. Well, I'm gonna, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how adventurous I get. I really did love Night at the Museum. I feel like yes. it's way over the top, but I just it was very like Met, Met Gala like last year. Not the, yeah. The, yeah. I just loved. It. I mean, I I loved it. It's just so fun and kind yeah. of. I don't know. There's there's no there's not a super sharp point to it. It's just like mm-hmm. fun and um, yeah, I love the kind of graphic impact of it. But mm-hmm. probably not going to wear it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I think that's yeah, that's mine too. Yeah. I do love it, but I just don't see myself sewing or or wearing it, but I do. I do love it. Yeah, I really can't see Amanda wearing that one. Yeah. You Meg, I maybe could picture it, but Amanda uh, Yeah, I mean I mean yeah. yeah. Maybe. <laughs> okay, I'll wear it. No. <laughs> Don't feel obligated. I'm just saying no, I know, my, I know. Own, my own mental picture. I'm like, yeah, Meg kind of goes for that kind of crazy stuff. And Amanda yeah, yeah. Yeah. really does I not don't. go for crazy stuff. I appreciate stuff. it, though. <laughs> uh, so next is what's your favorite trend that you could actually see yourself recreating and and wearing? Like what's the most kind of achievable one that you're like, you know what? I'm going to put that into my fall 2019 sewing plans. Well, I really love the high shine. I mean, I don't know where oh, yeah. our metallics are on on the trend spectrum if they if they are potentially going out, but um, I would definitely wear some shiny stuff for the holidays. Mm-hmm. Um, I did love the nothing but knits look, partly because um, we're working on our next sew along, which is an awesome knit blazer, mm-hmm. and I might make mit- matching pants. So Ooh. it will be a knit on knit suit in this really bright orange color. <laughs> so well, it's not that bright. It's pretty rusty. It's bright for me. It's bright for me. Um, yeah. But I and I did really love the pistachio trend. Although I yeah. feel like I don't know. I have a couple. I keep buying tinsel twill that is like this light green color. Like I bought it twice. Um, and every and when I buy it, I'm just kind of disappointed because it looks a little bit gray, and I don't gray does not mm. look good on me. But um, but I I do either way. I have plans to sew it up this fall, so I think it'll I think it'll work out. Awesome. But I don't know about head to toe. That will require some new shoes. Yep. For sure. Yes, <laughs> new shoes. How about you, yeah. Kate? Oh, uh, let's see. I um I'm I agree on the nothing but knits. Um, I kind of go there anyway half the time, yeah. so, um, so I might have to look into some uh, longer knit pants than I currently have. 
Um, but I definitely am a fan of knits in general. And so I think that one would be easy. That's mm-hmm. not even something mm-hmm. I'd have to be sewing whole outfits. I could just, yeah. you know, repurpose some stuff. And and of course, I am also making a blazer for this uh, sew along. And mine is um, not bright orange. Mine is like a dusty pink pastelish kind of thing. Ooh. So pretty. Um, and I did not have enough leftover fabric to make pants, um, but maybe I can make some shorts and wear them next summer. I don't know. <laughs> They're cute. Or a skirt. Uh, or a skirt. Yeah. skirt with that I might be able to make a skirt really for sure. And then I can get some um, like – uh, right leggings. Yeah, I can get some like uh, cobalt blue or something. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, and have crayon legs with my. Okay, some I'm, crayon legs. I'm starting to feel this. I'm starting to feel this. <laughs> yeah, together. Awesome. Um, also, we have been talking kind of on and off for a while about um, the Tamarack jacket. We've been put, we've featured it in So News a few months ago, and we were. Um, we've been kind of discussing the possibility of maybe getting together with our quilting people and trying something out there. Um, and so when I was sitting there looking at that basically bedding, which was very, very much quilted over where it was mm-hmm. what was jumping out at me, I was thinking, Mel, maybe it's time for me to suck it up and give that tamarack jacket a try. Oh, so, it's such a good pattern. I love it. I know you do. I know you do. And you said it's not that complicated, so it's I shouldn't not. be afraid of it. I mean, I didn't – I made one and I didn't go crazy with the quilting – but the, the quilting lines I did, they're just horizontal lines, but it does mm-hmm. kind of subtly remind me of a sleeping bag. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, a little oh, bit. Yes. You could have so much fun with that. And really, you know, mm-hmm. if you added some like thicker batting and really kind of got a little bit more of a puff to mm-hmm. it, I think oh, yeah. Yeah. it'd be cozy and you'd be super on trend. My problem is yes. I've got this uh, this inclination to go get some fancy um, quilting uh Embroidery designs from Urban you Threads. Sh- you should and do like, that. And like, you know, do like down the back, it's got like fantasy quilting, like yes. dragons and fairies and stuff or something like that. I oh, don't know. wow. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. It's probably be after um, after Vienna that I can mm-hmm. even start to think about that sort of thing. But we'll mm-hmm. put it on my list as a possibility for sure. Mm-hmm. How about you, Meg? What are you going to sew? I am definitely sewing head to toe pistachio. I just yeah, um, shocker. Yeah, I know. Well, I have some. You know that fabric that I used for plugging in Capsule Studio, mm-hmm. the the well traveled collection. Mm-hmm. I kind of used a pistachio. It is totally um, that fabric. So um, I have some of that left over. So I'm definitely going to start to think about looks all all in that color fabric I just I, I love it because it, it's kind of feels sometimes fall colors are just I mean I do love them I love like a copper kind of but I I like how pistachio is still a spring like kind of gives spring vibes yeah. too but I like sewing it maybe in finding like a, a sweater knit in a pistachio fabric and sewing sewing that so kind of getting come out of the weight of hopefully I can find this <laughs> like a weight <laughs> of a, a fall fabric but in the color of pistachio yeah, right. I mean I'll try yeah, yeah I could always yeah back or something so well, I definitely gonna I don't feel do like that. pistachio is so springy that it can't make a yeah. lot of oh, sense yeah. it's fall. kind of a it's oh, no, kind of neutral true, yeah. yeah it's got that kind it of gray is, yeah. tone yeah, to it yeah exactly and, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think you can wear that mm-hmm. all year long Mm-hmm. For sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but as to Amanda's point, I need to find some pistachio shoes for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, actually, you know what? I did buy some. Um, like little, I guess they're kind of sandals for, you know, late, later at the wedding. They're kind of pistachio, uh, those like sporty slides mm-hmm. that you can get. Cause I, you know, all night on my feet, I, I bought a green pair of little, little slides to, to put on. And they're, That's they're kind of call. like a pistachio color. So there you go. maybe I can reutilize those. <laughs> <laughs> Just have a, like a thick sock in them. Yeah. Cause that's the trend really coming back still. Socks and sandals. Socks and sandals. Oh, I mean, Lordy. Oh, Julian rocks that Does trend. He? A lot, awesome. yeah. Socks and Burks and Crocs and yeah, he socks he and Crocs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now on to what is our least favorite trend? Why don't you start, Meg? Um, I'm gonna say romance gone grunge is probably my least favorite. I just feel like I just can't pull it off myself, or I don't know. I'm just. I just don't love it for, for me. So that's probably my my least favorite. I don't know. That was just like the leather and lace. I just I don't know. It's yeah, just kind of in the you know, it's back. 
it's back in time for me. I just I, not quite yet. Maybe I can't say in the future if I'm, you know, all for it. But right as of right now, more into pistachio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like for me, it's I'm just never really into super romantic looks like. Oh, Lace yeah. is not my favorite. And even with the kind of edge to it, it just seemed. Yeah. I don't know. Didn't seem super wearable and just, yeah, yeah. not me. Um, I also, mm-hmm. period pieces, I mean, I, I appreciate the artistry mm-hmm. and the silhouettes, but definitely not something that um, that I'm super into. And I thought corsets were going away, but they're not. Mm-hmm. Maybe they are. Uh, Maybe this is their last their last, last gasp. gasp. Their I last hope so. <laughs> I mean, I, I love it again, but like can't really wear one on a I mean where do you wear one I don't know some people wear them instead of bras because they, do they? support their backs yeah. I don't know some yeah that's true yeah I mean I could really use a after all the sewing I'm doing I could really use a corset to straighten me out or just a nap <laughs> right exactly or or just a, yeah, yeah or just a nap <laughs> what about you Kate what were your least faves well um I don't I don't disagree on the romance gun grunge and the period pieces. They weren't like my favorite favorites. Um, but I'm actually going to probably take you guys off because the night at the museum uh, probably got my lowest vote. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. It's, I really wanted to like it. I mean, I looked at I loved I liked the concept, but all of the images that I saw, I was like, but I just don't like the way it looks. Um, uh-huh. And it could have been not so much the the graphicness of it. It could have just been the cuts of the clothing um, that they it was on. But it just it just did not do it for me. And like I said, uh-huh. I really wanted it to, but it just yeah. it didn't get there for me. I also I have to <laughs> I I'm a big fan of the classics, so uh-huh. putting oh, the yeah. twist on them didn't really like I, like what you were saying earlier about like the with the interesting piping or the plaid lining that sort of thing is fine but again the ones in the actual fashion show were really kind of boxy and had real weird shapes to them and I'm like if I'm gonna wear a trench coat I want it to look like a trench coat this not this you know burlap sack that I'm looking at right now so that one didn't really uh, that one didn't really do it for me either I have to say Mm -hmm. I will say for night at the museum just to backtrack a little bit, mm-hmm. I feel like I am seeing a trend towards like art prints so, yes. and like big yeah. scale. And I think mm-hmm. I'm kind of mm-hmm. drawn to that more than yep. this actual like recreation of a you yes. know, famous painting type look. And right. and those, I mean, they're definitely kind of artsy and graphic, um, but the, the ones that are kind of more painterly and um, – yeah. You know, that seems more wearable to me. I don't know if I will wear, like, a full-length dress with a big face on the side of it, but, you know, there's mm-hmm. something to shoot for. Well, and part of the thing is, one of the, th- one of the things I really liked about this um, this article that Meg gave us to look at in this case was that it had a wear the trend thing at yeah. the bottom of each one. So, you know, mm-hmm. you looked at the high fashion and then yeah. you, sh- you looked at it. translated. A, yeah, translated yeah. to a ready to wear that you might actually, that you might actually wear. Cause let's be honest, very few people wear those high fashion it's things. True. Oh yeah. They're yeah, so, for sure. Um, and you know, I'm like going through the period pieces and I'm like, don't like this very much. Don't like this very much. Don't like this. But then you see but the then I got actual to the, implication the trend, of it. And I'm like, Oh, yeah. that's cute. I would wear that, you know, mm-hmm. and I, I think I can't remember about the romance gone grunge, but um, yeah, when I got to the, you know, where the trend on the night at the museum, I'm like, nope, still don't like it. <laughs> so that's how I got my final Still vote. not wearable. Right. So and, you know, I, I judge no one for choosing to wear that. I'm just saying for me personally, it doesn't do it. Mm hmm. Well, what do they what did it say? Different strokes for different. That's strokes. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the beauty of sewing. You just make what yeah, make what, what you That's why I love fashion trends. True, too. It's totally to your to your point, Kate. It's just kind of this inspiration and kind of idea, and then you know it trickles down to actually kind of wearable and and sewable, even in our cases. Well, and right. And I look at this one. I'm like, okay, I don't like nights at the museum, but I do like the crayon lakes. So I will, and then nothing but knits. So now I have a idea that integrates both of them and I can just leave the night at the museum thing al- alone and so a different trend mm-hmm. yeah I mean I, <laughs> yeah. I'm i skeptical of trends but I will say that I think through our conversations about them I've 
I've grown to to see them more, you know, as inspiration, yeah. as jumping off points, mm-hmm. as in those moments when I'm super bored because I'm sewing yeah. my 50th cardigan <laughs> that, you know, to try something different and, you know, not be, you know, tied to those in any way. But but just thinking about, you know, here and there adding little little touches. So, ooh, I want to make a basically bedding like cardigan. So it's not a coat. It's just like when I'm still cold inside, it's just like a little puffy cardigan. Yeah, you that should do fun. that. Yeah, that sounds right. I cute. definitely should do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that kind of uh, um, wraps okay, up. Okay, before um, we wrap up, though, oh, can I what? say a thing? I'm sorry, I didn't put it on the script. So you guys did know I was going to say this, but oh. I discovered a trend that you guys probably Ooh. already know about. But oh, I'm let's so proud of myself for this. <laughs> <laughs> so I was traveling a couple weeks ago. I was hanging out with my 18-year-old cousin, and I noticed that she was wearing a scrunchie. And as somebody oh, who yes. grew up in the in the 90s, who was a teenager in the 90s, I was like, no. No, because, you know, I, I remember. I remember when scrunchies were in, and I remember when scrunchies were really not in, and you did not wear scrunchies under any circumstances. No. So uh-huh. I asked her, I'm like, are scrunchies in? She's like, oh, yeah. And she starts telling oh, they me. they are so bad. They're so yeah. bad. She's, like, telling me all the benefits of them. She's like, I've got, like, 30 scrunchies. I'm like, so do I, because I still haven't gotten rid of my ones from the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm like, I could be cool, except my hair's not long enough. So, But I was so proud of myself for noticing that and putting it together and being like, oh, oh, yeah. that's a thing. That's a trend. And then just to top it all off, I just like this story. I'm flying back from Idaho and the girl who was sitting next to me in the um, in my airplane seat, she's in the next seat over and she's like, I don't know, maybe late teens, early 20s, something like that. Mm-hmm. And she is hand sewing scrunchies. That is what she did for what? that entire flight. She sat there. She was like, put it, she had her strips of fabric all ready to go. She put them around a water bottle with the, with the hair tie in the middle. And she just sat there sewing, hand sewing scrunchies this entire flight. And I'm like, oh that's my. That's amazing. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, that's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, I discovered a trend, you guys. It's not particularly new, but I noticed it. So, yay me. Good mm-hmm. points for yeah, that. Yeah, they are <laughs> so bad. I know, Berta, I'll link to Berta has a scrunchie tutorial on how, how to make your own. Because I think I, pl- um, what was it? Jason Momoa wore it too. I think, was it the Met or the Oscars? I think it was the Oscars. He wore that kind of pink velvet suit and he had a scrunchie Did on it his match? wrist. It, oh, oh, it matched. <laughs> <laughs> um, All right, maybe yes, I'll do a scrunchie. Well, <laughs> well you could I, actually I wear hair, a scrunchie. I think my hair is too yeah. short to wear a I scrunchie think, because the scrunchie would just like consume. It would just look like I'm just have a scrunchie fastened to the back of my head with like no right. hair. <laughs> my, my cousin told me I could do like little pigtails with a scrunchie. Wow. Like, okay. Do you know what they should make is like little, like little, like baby scrunchies, like little ones so you can like. If you put your hair like half up, it's a scrunchie that's not as thick yeah. and big, but kind of like a half up scrunchie. Well, make some, mm. make they're not hard. <laughs> I know that that is true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it would be kind of a scrunchie that you know you could wear them on your wrist, but it would be like you could wear them as like a ring if you're not wearing yes. it in your hair. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm picturing my, my standard rings. little my standard little hair bands, you know, that are about it what an inch diameter yeah, like the, yeah, and yeah, I'm yeah. like yeah I could totally put a little strip of fabric around those and make teeny tiny scrunchies if I wanted <laughs> to oh my gosh <laughs> I'd like to see that all right so I'm gonna go cut some pistachio yeah, ring are. scrunchies <laughs> and we're, we're good to go <laughs> we better see them in wedding right. pictures that's all I'm saying oh my gosh oh totally all right Okay, so now that we have talked about fall trends, let's talk a little bit more about our fall sewing plans, which may or may not incorporate those trends as we see appropriate. Um, So I want to start by asking you guys, what are your favorite fabrics to sew with in the fall? You know, I... I really love fall fabrics. I I think that um, I mean I love swishy summer breezy fabrics as mm-hmm. well. But I really love structured fabric. I like the way it yeah, looks. like a nice stable. Yeah, exactly. Fabric. So I, yeah. I mean I really love canvas, um, especially yeah. if you can find something that's got a little bit of drape to it, um, just because it weathers in really mm-hmm. nicely. Um, I also really love denim. Like I just love denim in all its forms. Yeah, denim. It's got. I feel like it's got. Just a little bit of give to it, um, and then you wash it, and it shrinks back up. And I don't know. It's just fabulous. Um, And also, 
Big surprise. Lenin. I knew it was coming. Lenin. It was coming. But yeah. I, you know, I haven't really experimented too much with heavyweight linens. They're out there, um, mm-hmm. and I need to get some. So that's on the list. Definitely. Yeah, I, uh, I hadn't really thought about canvas for um, – for clothing, I tend to mm-hmm. think of it as being more of a mm-hmm. more of a, a bag sewing fabric. What do you sew with canvas? Uh, you can sew tons of stuff. You can sew pants, like really structured pants. Mm-hmm. I have a couple in canvas. I think. I mean, and there's also a I, bunch of canvas blends out there. Like if you yeah. can find a good canvas hemp blend, it's actually a, really cozy. I've sewn a canvas skirt before, like with a ple- like a, a, a like a. a Pleat goes really mm-hmm. nicely in kind of like a lighter mm-hmm. weight yep. canvas too. You could do jackets. Mm-hmm. You could do oh yeah overalls or coveralls. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I feel like it's and I I think it is kind of underestimated when it comes to garments. Um, yeah, for but sure. you do and you do have to do a little oh, work yeah. to to track down something that will um, drape a little bit. But yeah, and I'm thinking I'm guessing from my own experience with canvas, which is very limited, that you want to find a really nicely soft one mm-hmm. rather than like the one I made my most recent bag out of was pretty stiff and, and yeah. hard. But I know that like Art Gallery Fabric, um, their canvas is super soft. Yeah, yeah. I could see that being mm-hmm. clothing very yeah, easily. And, as, and you know, the more you wash it, the softer it gets. There's, there's. I actually um, found a canvas. I can't remember what the blend was, but it was – like a stretch canvas, and it was awesome. Oh, um, so yeah, canvas all the way. Interesting. Mm-hmm. How about you, Meg? What do you like to sew with in the fall? I love sewing a sweater knit, mm-hmm. like a cut and sew kind of uh, a knitted fabric. I, I some of my favorite pieces that I actually wear again and again are I made from a sweater knit. So I really like that because it's like quick, like a quick Super sew. Quick. It's just like sewing, you know, serge the side seams, cover stitch the hems, mm-hmm. and you have. A turtleneck in like an hour and it's yeah I love that nice mm-hmm. oh so here's my confession is I don't sew enough for fall specifically and so I'm mm-hmm. actually getting ideas from you guys right now oh <laughs> nice <laughs> good call nice research yes um I, well I know the right people to speak to and I don't know what to do about <laughs> yeah. something um yeah I I like to sew some knits. Like, I like to sew leggings in the fall. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I, I generally Super look for mm-hmm. knits. Um, and right now, of course, I'm working. <laughs> my fall sewing plans are very aggressively trying to finish my Vienna wardrobe, which is not in real good shape right now. So, I've got mm-hmm. uh, I've got some linen I've got um, that I need to cut um, out. And I've got some rayons. And they're probably too light. But, oh, well, I'm going to do them anyway. And, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, some nice interlock knit, I think, is going to be one of my shirts. So, um, yeah, I've got some some thoughts. Um, yeah. So do you have any styles or patterns of things that you traditionally sew in the fall? Meg, you start me. Um. Yeah, just basically I wrote down turtlenecks. Like that's kind of uh, my go-to fall pattern, really. It's like a turtleneck um, or any sort of like knit top. Just something easy that I can mm-hmm. I can make. I, I want to start. I need to sew a new pair of like fall fall pants. I haven't sewn fall pants in a long time, so that's kind of what I want. What I want to do next. Do you think but... you could do your pants that you made all summer in a thicker weight fabric? Oh, definitely. I think yeah, that, those would look mm-hmm. super cute. You know, they. I think they would yeah. too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I totally you could. Should. Like a nice like pistachio. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Pistachio. <gasps> oh, a nice pistachio. Even like a heavy crepe could do yeah, that. Yeah. And you could you could definitely wear that in in like kind of early yeah. fall too. Yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe I should. And then it's kind of less into I can just whip whip it yeah. up and and see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how do you define fall pants specifically? What makes a pair of pair of pants fall pants? I guess yeah, definitely if they're not too lightweight. I know, uh, you know, like a light linen, li- linen. Oh, geez, <laughs> a light <laughs> linen <laughs> for the summer. But fall, I just feel like it needs to be like a thicker or cozier fabric, and then also the hemline too. Sometimes, um, even though the look of like still the kind of crop pants, then you have like a a knit sock that you can kind of see, and then a boot. I do love that too, but still the the wind. Can I know it's Toronto gets like super cold and windy. The wind finds its way up that wide pant leg that's cropped. <laughs> <laughs> 
unless you wear like full on tights underneath, I guess I could do that. Oh, it's this is not fun talking about like wearing multiple layers yeah. of like oh, the dead so of sorry. winter. I'm like, like oh, I guess no, we're we're talking about fall, not winter sewing, guys. This is yes, be fine. definitely. Just try to convince myself that. How about yeah. you, Amanda? What do you like to sew, sew well, in fall? I will say the same thing. I mean, I think. I kind of group fall and winter together because yeah, the yeah, fall yeah. in Colorado can be quite short. Um, I feel like mm-hmm. it stays yeah. hot almost through the end of October, and then yeah. you get like a nice kind of fallish November, and then it's right into winter. So I tend to it's like, group them together, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. but I do usually sew some pants again with a little bit mm-hmm. of a higher crop because um, and wear. Wear sandals as long as I possibly can. Yep. Yeah. Um, oh. I definitely sew a lot of cardigans, although I think I've only sewn one or two this year. Which is so good because that's... you did kind of promise you were going to control your cardigan yeah. urges. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing okay, guys. <laughs> I'm doing okay. But I will say it's not a cardigan, but it's pretty much a cardigan. Is that I, I mentioned earlier we were sewing um, – a blazer for our next sew along, and it's in a nice um, kind of thick ponty knit. And oh, a knit yeah, blazer! And I'm I love that. I'm kind of liking the blazer look. I mean, it's kind of I don't usually oh, wear yeah. them, and I think I was kind mm-hmm. of wanting one in my wardrobe. Um, so I'm kind of excited. I, I might have to make a few of them. Yeah, when you uh, yeah. strolled into my office last week wearing your in process blazer, I was like, wow, that looks really great. I, I felt pretty fancy. I know. I yeah. I used to wear so many blazers like years ago and I have I used to collect vintage blazers. So I have some crazy like 80s blazers and they've been in my closet for a good amount of years now. I think it's time to bring them bring them back. Well, especially out. Their 80s blazers. <laughs> this is the time. Oh, yeah. I have this one. It's a it's a bright green suede and it has shoulder pads and huge oh gold gosh. buttons. <laughs> and every year when I do kind of my wardrobe trips, I, I go, I haven't worn this yet, but I like, I can't get rid of it. Um, if any Canadians out, out there know it's a vintage like Danier leather uh, one mm-hmm. and it's, it's really fun. So yeah, I think, yeah, it's, I, I, I would love to bring back a blazer look. I think that'd be fun. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Well, um, I generally look for, uh, things with three quarter length sleeves to just kind of hit that oh, that yeah. mid level Good between call. really cold and um, and uh, warm. So uh, my gallery dress and gallery tunics are high on that list. Yeah, they're um, perfect. I actually probably should make some more tunics that are not flannel um, for the fall. And also my Roscoe blouses I really like for fall. Mm-hmm. Um, and and the mm-hmm. I have a dress version of that as well that I can toss on with some leggings, which is really, really good for that time of year. So those are kind of my favorite fall patterns. Um, yeah. So what are you guys actually planning to sew this fall? I know we've kind of been touching on that a little bit here and there, mm-hmm. but what what are your plans looking like? My first to do is I want a sweater dress. Like that's what cool. I really want. Like a kind of combined. Yeah. Because I, it's, it's just kind of nice just throwing on one thing instead of yeah. pairing mm-hmm. two pieces. With some, I, yeah. With some so bright leggings. That's going to be tights. Mm-hmm. Exactly. With some Cute. bright tights and boots and just like a sweater dress. So that's, I'm going to try and incorporate more one pieces into my wardrobe because I do have a lot of separates. I just kind of want some more, you know, one piece. See, yeah. and that makes me think I need to get some bright tights to go with my Estes dress mm-hmm. that I have. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want a sweater dress now too. <laughs> well, <laughs> my I know list this just keeps getting longer. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I think it happens every year, but I, I really have a hard time cutting myself off from summer sewing, and mm-hmm. this year in particular, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I have. A I have a lot of separates as well, and I was just not excited about fall at all. And usually, you know, I've got my list, I've got my fabrics, I'm ready to go, and I just Mm -hmm. was not there this fall until I made um, the Zadie jumpsuit, which has (gasps) a long-sleeve version, and... Oh, does yes. it? So I am making at least two of those this fall. Oh, and I'm, I am that's a good I'm excited idea. about it because, you know, it's not pants. It's not a top. It's not a dress, you know. And and I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to experiment with some more um, structured fabrics just to see yeah. how it works. But I'm hoping it'll have like subtle kind of workwear utility vibes. Uh, yes. um, so a long sleeve jumpsuit. Yeah. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. 
But um, but that's about it so far. Although this uh, episode is really helping. I know, right? <laughs> I know. I'm actually getting. I, I was kind of like, oh, I don't want to talk about fall, but now I'm, I'm ready. All I want to do is like drink a pumpkin spice latte <laughs> and like walk on crunchy leaves in the park. That sounds pretty good. Little pistachios. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Kate? Oh well, um, my answer for this question was supposed to be: I am just getting through my. Um, my wardrobe for Vienna because by the time I get back, it's going to be early November and that's mm-hmm. when it starts getting, you know, colder yeah. and that's when I really probably mm-hmm. can start wearing the winter clothes more. And so my fall yeah. stuff has got to be focused on getting through all of that. And of course, that's already been planned out since like January and I'm not being very efficient at it, unfortunately. Um, of course, now that we've had this conversation, I'm like, I need to make a skirt to go with my blazer. I need to start working on a tamarack jacket. Yeah. Um, I need to do all of this other stuff. But I need to control myself and remind myself that Colorado's uh, temperatures do all sorts of wonky things. And I can so wonky. probably I know. wear a tamarack jacket in yeah. at least a couple days in February if I get to that uh, point. So oh, absolutely. I can and hold, March. Mm-hmm. And March. Yeah. yeah. And I, so I can hold off yeah. on yeah. doing mm-hmm. that and the um, little suit with the crayon legs mm-hmm. can also wait <laughs> so yes I am focusing on my Vienna wardrobe that is what I am sewing mm-hmm. this fall mm-hmm. oh I know I read an article last week it was Toronto in for like a hot and humid September I was like yeah. ooh. <laughs> oh well, <laughs> if, it, if it doesn't, only one day. I did. I need nice in September. Only. That's right. One day. One day. Yeah. Well, and I mean, I'm I'm a summer girl. I love the summer. Um, fall is oh, nice, yeah. but it's followed by winter, so I prefer summer all the time. Um, so I'm lucky. I live in a state where we probably have at least at least another month and a half of summery weather. Oh, I yeah. think so. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I've basically, I think we've been kind of discussing this as we go through. But does anybody else yeah. want to say anything about any other trends that they might sew for this for fall? Any of these trends that we've been discussing, or have we all we have exhausted the pistachio and um, the nothing but knits and the crayon legs? I'm, I might I might do a shiny jumpsuit. We have <gasps> one. Oh my we gosh! We have one coming up. Um, in an issue of So News, that it's it's kind of like a subtle sparkle. Um, you'll have to you'll have to wait and see. But it is spectacular. It is oh, spectacular. A shiny jumpsuit. Um, but oh. you know, like a subtle shine. I mean, I don't need a holiday look, but I kind of want one. But yeah, and we can do what we did last year and just dress up for the holiday party yeah. and just not care that nobody else is doing it. <laughs> Done. Oh my god, <laughs> it's a deal. All right. Thanks for talking through fall sewing plans with me, guys. I, I really didn't want to start thinking about fall yet, but at I least know. this has me excited yeah. on some level. Yeah. Thanks, you guys. Like, I'm actually a lot me more too. excited than when I started talking about <laughs> Me <them>. too. <laughs> okay, great. Our work I guess is done. Yeah, I guess we, we win. are too, <laughs> yes, listening. <exactly. laughs> All right. Well, let's hop into Sojo, where we talk about our sewing mojo and our sewing inspiration, which I feel like might have changed since we started talking about yeah. fall things. Um, let's start with you, Kate. Oh, well, mine hasn't actually changed. No? Um, we because tried. <laughs> we tried. Yo, you tried really hard. And honestly, I might I might fast forward a Sojo from today into our next episode. Um, but I just finished three days at an anime convention. Mm-hmm. And so oh, I have right. been looking at a lot of cosplay. And people are very impressive. And I guess I'm not Mm – I often come out of con thinking, oh, next year I'm going to do a full-on cosplay and it's going to be great. And then I remember, no, I need to be comfortable because I'm working eight-hour days and – no, 12-hour days. And um, I decide I'm not going to do that. Um, So this it's not really sewing inspiration for me except that I learned that steampunk is very, very out now. Oh, yeah. So I have to put aside my steampunk plans that I've had for three years and haven't touched yet. (laughs) And say, I've got to wait till Steampunk comes back in to start that project. Um, so that's like the opposite of inspiration, I guess. But yeah, just people are amazing. They make amazing things. And that's it's awesome. always nice to be in a situation where you 
have your moments because you're a sewist where you look at somebody and you're like, you really should have hemmed that edge instead of just leaving it raw. But you know what? I don't care because you look good and you're only wearing it for a day. So, yeah, cosplay. Yay. Cosplay Yay. is inspiring. I, sh- I should have had that approach to my wedding dress. Just You're only exactly. going to wear a day. Just <laughs> leave that edge on t- <laughs> <laughs> That's a slightly different story. but <laughs> No, I know. I, was just- <laughs> I don't think you could have handled that. I really don't. <laughs> I know. Oh, I could just have- Yeah, not, not being good. All right, so I guess I can just jump into my sojo now then because I'm not quite in the clear yet yeah. for, for wedding sewing. Um, I'm still working. My second look is almost done. I'll hopefully finish that up tonight. But my kind of next um, next thing that I'm kind of excited about making is obviously I need like a getting ready robe. Mm, yes. Because <laughs> I... I have some of this like silky uh, ivory satin and I'm going to embroider in lime green like bride across, you know, as I'm sitting here, like I'll show you guys I'm drinking out of my bride bride mug. mug. I'm just, you know, you got to get in all the the basic bride stuff and those robes are and I I can embroider things myself. So why not make my own robe? And I'm sure it won't take too, too long. I had a... Mark and Hopefully. I had a pair of flip flops that said Mr. and Mrs. on the bottom. It, it, and it was like it was like engraved in. So the theory was as you were walking on the beach, it was supposed to leave the words behind in the sand. Oh, how it didn't cute. actually work, but it was super cute. Did it? <laughs> a cute idea. Love that. Well, my sojo yeah. right now is all about the Zadie jumpsuit. Mm-hmm. And oh, I will have yeah. to say I had made one. I finished one in this kind of eye cat fabric. And but I hadn't really worn it for a very long time. But we were at the conference, um, and I wore it all day long. I put it on at like mm-hmm. seven thirty, yep. and didn't take it off until ten thirty at night. Yep. I even I did the ultimate faux pas, and I wore it on the airplane, and it was awesome. It was comfortable. Why is that a faux pas? Long. Because it's just tricky to go to the bathroom on the airplane oh, in general. On and an then air- when you oh, wear, I see, I see. You know, a jumpsuit. The jump- Putting that into yeah, the mix, but, yeah. Um, but I, I mean, there's, there's definitely awkward spots, but, whoa, whoa. but as comfortable yeah. as I was, it was totally worth it. So, Good to know. Oh, yeah. so yeah, making a million, making a million. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Oh yeah, and going back to even last episode, um, the kind of Toronto fancy social I was, I was at. There was about like five Zadie people yeah. making Zadie there's, jumpsuits. There's a reason. It was fun each. Yeah. And it was so cool to see them all, uh, all there. So yeah, it's definitely like an it yeah, pattern at, at the, the moment, moment right now. I think, uh, yeah, totally. And I didn't know it had a long sleeve yes. version. That's so cool. Like now that's, I really want a long sleeve yeah. jumpsuit for the fall too. Yep. I think that's nice. Cause then it goes in with my all in one piece yeah. kind of what I want. And I was thinking what I want to make you it could do, You could still wear it with cardigans and stuff and like layer it up oh, in a totally. lot of different ways. Oh my so. gosh. Totally. We'll see. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Or just wear it every day, which might happen. Yeah. All day, every day. Yeah. I want to see this jumpsuit. Even on the all plane. All day, every day. I, I want to see this jumpsuit Even you made. So you need to wear it to work. <laughs> I do need to wear it to work. I will. Well, let's hop over to our sew and tell section so um, you, our lovely audience and listeners out there, can can weigh in. We want to know what fall trend you are looking forward to sewing. You can mm-hmm. answer on our show notes page. You can email us. Our email is sewandtellpodcast at peakmediapproperties.com. Or you can respond on our Instagram account and let us know what you're excited to sew. We are going to read the responses on an Instagram live that will happen on September 12th. Yep. We are still in the midst of our moving situation. Yeah. uh, Trying to figure out when when it's actually going to happen. And so we're uh, trying to make sure that we're not... (laughs) Messing ourselves up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And let us know. Let us know if you've if you've um, tuned in for an Instagram live. Let us know how you feel about that because I don't know. We're kind of having fun with it. Yeah, we're kind of enjoying it. So mm-hmm. if that works better for you than us reading it here on the uh, podcast, let us know and we'll we'll kind of decide where to go from there. Yeah, and that's at mm-hmm. at So Intel Pod. So mm-hmm. find us over there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Thanks for talking trends with me, guys. Yeah, I'm um, so inspired. Yeah. I, feel, I feel like. Every time we do one of these, I get a little bit less weirded out by the whole trend idea. And I get a little bit more comfortable with it. (laughs) I know. Meg's Meg's been a good influence on us. Definitely. Or she's been a bad influence. It's real bad. We don't really know. I feel like inspiration is not bad. Putting new things in the mix. That's true. Inspiration is not bad. That's true. 
Well, cool. That was fun. That was fun. Mm-hmm. Thanks, everybody, for yeah. listening. Happy stitching. Happy stitching. Yeah. Bye. For links to everything we talked about in this episode, go to our show notes page at sodaily.com slash sewandtell. If you want to get in touch with us, you can email us at sewandtellpodcast at peakmediaproperties.com or visit us on Instagram at sewandtellpod. Answer our sew and tell question, tell us your sojo, or just leave us some feedback. If you enjoyed our show, please subscribe on your podcasting platform of choice. And please leave us a review, ideally a good one, because that helps listeners like you find our podcast. And tell your sewing friends about us too. Thanks for listening and happy stitching. Sew and Tell is produced by Meg Healy, Amanda Carestio, and me, Kate Zeinard. Our consulting producer is Ron Doyle, and our executive producer is Jared Mayer. <laughs>